welcome my subjects, particularly the American ones. Because today, as you know very well from your history classes at school, is the 157th anniversary of the creation of Montana. A funny place, Montana. Montana is a place that is 20% uh, larger than Poland, despite having 1 million population compared to Poland's 38 million. Europeans have often heard about Sweden, for example, being very empty, having very low density in population because most of the population is down south and the rest is just a barren wasteland of snow and trees. Well, imagine that except 10 times emptier, because the density of Montana is only 2.7 population per square kilometer compared to Sweden's 25. That's how empty Montana is. Now, what we're talking about today is some more data mining, which has gone missing for the last few days. I guess Blizzard was still working on the deeper mechanics of 9.1, nothing ready to be data mined and to be pushed into the PTR, I guess. One of the things I bitched about a few days ago was the fact that, yeah, uh, I've been making these videos about what to play in 9.1, what could be cool, what could be interesting, which specs are looking good and whatnot, but there is a big thing missing which is the seasonal affix of Mythic Plus. Mythic Plus is a big part of the end game activities of players, together with raiding and with PvP, so it is crucial that you know what you're getting into before you choose what to play. It comes by itself that if you're thinking about focusing in Mythic Plus the next season, you kind of need to know which spec you can guess is going to be powerful, and to do so, you need to know about the affix, which is something we don't. Of course, it's not that you can justify playing Mistweaver because you think that the new affix of Mythic Plus is going to make it OP, but still, if you want to make a decision that is going to make you spend hundreds of hours playing a certain character, that would be a cool thing to know. And the complaint was that we went several weeks without knowing anything about the seasonal affix. Eventually, we did get something. We got the Kiston affix description from Blizzard. This was, at this point, over... 20 days ago, almost a month ago, which said defeat the Jailer's forces to gain cool powers. So what we knew at that point is that the Taragru, the first boss in the Sanctum of Domination raid, would have had anima powers. You start putting two and two together when you hear something like that. Okay, so they're expanding anima powers into the raid, and now we have the new seasonal affix which reads gain cool powers. Now, where else do you gain cool powers? In Torghast, and now in the first boss of the raid. So that was an obvious assumption to make. Why we are talking about this again is because as part of the data mining, there have been two new powers. This time though, these are a little bit more suspicious. Because when you read the Athame of Necrotic Wounding, it reads, your armful spells and abilities consume the target with creeping decay, inflicting physical damage every two seconds and reducing healing and absorption received by 2% for eight seconds, stacking up to 10 times. The other one is called Volcanic Plumage. Your damaging abilities have a chance to create a gout of flame beneath the target that erupts after 2.5 seconds, dealing damage based on mythic zero difficulty to all enemies within three yards, knocking them upward. Yeah, I mean, it's not really suspicious as it is obvious, right? Number one, they are called necrotic wounding and volcanic plumage, so they are literally the necrotic affix and the volcanic affix, except they are buffs that you get. And the buffs you are getting are basically doing the same thing of those affixes. You are basically turning this upside down and dealing all of the affixes you can't stand back to the mobs. It does look like the cool powers mentioned almost a month ago are indeed referencing to a pseudo anima power system. Now, eventually, this damn system is going to have to come on the PTR, right? So for now, we can only mostly speculate. However, as we are doing that, the number one point is about RNG. This is what people get scared by. This is what people get afraid of, to have their power be out of their hands to be completely at the mercy of some random dice roll, which is often annoying. It depowers your character. It makes you feel less in control of your actions. So I don't think these anima powers are going to be exactly the same as you see in Torghast, basically. Because at the end of the day, as many of you often criticize Blizzard for, they have pushed 
the esports scene of Mythic Plus. They have tried to make it into a, an esports setting, which means it's very unlikely they're going to turn this into this complete random clown fiesta, which can completely make or break keys. The other thing is that Mythic Plus is still about speed, is about going fast. So having every time people stop for several seconds trying to decide which powers they want to take would also be pretty counterintuitive to what you're trying to do in Mythic Plus. It would be much more sensible and logical to actually make the players know what they are going to get from these powers. Maybe not know that they're going to get the exact three options, but maybe knowing they have to choose between six, seven or eight, always the same, to give them a good idea of what they're getting. The other thing is the class balance and the spec balance. I don't think there is any way that any of these powers, of course, are going to be class and spec related. The amount of tuning in Mythic Plus would be ridiculous. Imagine the complaint if we had to go for six months of a Mythic Plus season where a certain spec becomes broken simply because Blizzard gave them broken anima powers in Mythic Plus. That's obviously unfathomable. So it is almost guaranteed that all of these powers are going to be exactly what you read. These affix themed powers, which are just neutral. They're not really going to benefit one or the other. They're going to be for everyone. Sure, it's guaranteed that some of these powers will grow out of control. It's guaranteed that some specs will scale very well with haste, are going to be able to gain a power scaling with haste, and it will be very strong, etc, etc. That's classic. It's totally going to happen. But I'm pretty certain it's not going to be spec related when it comes to anima powers. The other question that popped up when the first data mining of the affix came out, defeating the jailer's forces. Okay. So we have a new affix, uh, we know at this point that it's going to be some mobs, right? It's going to be some jailer enemies that we have to take down. At this point, the question is, is it going to be trash breakpoint based? So is it going to be mobs spawning at, at 20, 40, 60, like we had right now for Prideful? Except instead of being one mob, is going to be essentially a trash pack that is going to come for you or something similar. Basically a similar version of what we had with Reaping in BFA. Back when you reach a certain level, you get mobs coming for you or the one much more refined, where the trash breakpoint wasn't as important as the obelisks, as what you wanted to do with those obelisks. Do you want it to just kill the mob inside and leave, or do you want it to use it as a skip, etc, etc. Or maybe is it something embedded into the key itself, like we had with Beguiling and Infested. Infested was literally just one of the mobs in several trash packs being affected by the little worm, of Gahoon and Beguiling was the same thing. A bunch of trash happened to have the forces of Ajara in them, but they weren't based on percentage. I don't think based on what we have seen so far that it is going to be based on trash count. It is going to be based on another season of 20, 40, 60, 80, 100%. What we had in BFA, by the way, was Infested, which was continuous throughout the dungeon, followed by Reaping, which was Trash Breakpoint, followed by Beguiling, which was continuous, followed by Awakened, which was breakpoint based in the sense of reaching the portals for the obelisks and defeating the mini boss. So it was technically continuous, but you still had to reach the breakpoints of the mini bosses. So we went one and one, one and one. We never had two full seasons back to back. So we have started again the expansion with a breakpoint affix. I do think it would be logical if we went into another season without a trash count breakpoint type of Mythic Plus. Now, of course, even if it works with the breakpoint system like Prideful, it is very different. These powers are supposed to last you for the entire key, whereas the entire thing around Prideful was to use it for an important pull. In the vast majority of the cases, that was going to be the boss. However, eventually Prideful has created some problems. The first problem, which did not affect, to be fair, 99% of the population playing Mythic Plus was that it scaled horribly. It scaled to the point where it would take you more damage and cost you more cooldowns to kill the Prideful than the benefit you would get from the buff, to the point where the vast majority, for example, of MDI groups were all Alliance, all going Shadow Meld and Shadow Melding, so vanishing, basically, away from Prideful and just ignoring it at beneficial timings that they wanted to use. The other problem is that Prideful is possibly the most pressure and the most unnecessary eyes be put on your tank. Because more so than ever, the tank is supposed to know the route compared to other seasons and other affixes. Not just because of the importance of the buff, the importance of killing tyrannical bosses, for example, with Prideful, but also because fucking up 
by even 1% or alpha percentage is going to screw the entire run. Even if you mess up at the start, the entire run, all the platforms are going to go out of sync and it's going to be a disaster. That was a lot of pressure to be put on your tank, which I also think Blizzard will try to fix in this new season. And one of the things that makes me guess that there is not going to be a trash count breakpoint system for the new affix is that moving away from that system, making it much less important to reach these breakpoints is going to give much more breathing room to tanks, right? It's going to give them more freedom, less liability on being much more strict with pulls and making them much more precise because otherwise your entire key is ruined. So it's going to help on that end as well, which leads to these jailer's forces likely be just a random bunch of mobs being scattered throughout the dungeon for you to kill and to get the extra power, which is also because we are talking about being something that exists from Torghast, that is exactly how Torghast works. You don't have specific pools where you gain anima powers. The anima powers are hidden on random enemies. More chances of it dropping from elites, but it's still random, except for rares and end of floor bosses, you have to specifically take an anima power to even be able to see where these powers are. So scattering these mobs in random trash packs is more fitting to how Torghast works. What also makes me think about the abandoning of the breakpoint system is the fact that in the last few tiers, whenever we had the breakpoint, we always had and saw people trying to get away from those. With the invisibility potion and the already mentioned shadow meld, people were able to just ignore this. They were able to just forget about this entire mechanic and just dodge it if they wanted to. I don't think Blizzard enjoyed that too much. I think they went and looked for a system that makes you want to do these things rather than just wanting to skip them. I think there is something wrong, especially with Prideful which is supposed to give you a bonus. At the very least, it was designed to be a high-risk, high-reward type of affix. For those of you who have played since BFA, Infested was a completely negative affix. You had no benefit, you had no bonus from defeating infested mobs. There was only possible negative things that could happen from defeating an infested mob pack. It was harder, it took longer, there were more chances of you fucking up and making the mobs unkillable, etc, etc. There were also no benefits from reaping. What did reaping give you? Any buffs? No. The only thing reaping gave you was pouring on the meters with saving your cooldowns for the AoE of the reaping mobs, and that's it. Beguiling was also mostly negative. Beguiling was just a bunch of mobs making the runs longer. Blizzard turned around only by the end of BFA, with Awakened. The pillars, the obelisks in the last season of BFA weren't actually giving you proper buffs or benefits or damage increases, but the first high risk, high reward, the first, the first positive plus negative thing put together, they gave you a skip. They gave you essentially free invisibility tied to the position of the obelisks. It also gave you an option. Do you want to be able to skip past a bunch of mobs with this system, but taking a little bit more time because you also have to deal with this mini boss or do you want to be faster to reach the end boss, but then spawn all of the mini bosses that you have not killed? It was also a cool possibility. So based on previous seasons, I think the most likely scenario is an updated version of the beguiling system, where you get the random mobs scattered throughout the mythic plus key and you have to kill them for the powers possibly with some safety measures added by blizzard to prevent you from just ignoring these mobs for example every boss every end boss of the key gets a 20 percent more damage and health for every jailer's forces mob that you missed out on or maybe the buff has five stacks so you have to at least kill five jailer's forces mobs to make the boss normal otherwise it's going to be empowered. That would limit you and the amount of skips you can do ignoring the entire seasonal affix. Like it could happen with Prideful, it could even happen with Awakened, by simply having your healer kite all four of the mini bosses while the rest of your group four mans the boss. That was also possible. I think Blizzard will also be thinking of a preventive measure to fix that. When it comes to the powers themselves, the ones that you can get, the first thing I noticed that I think is pretty good, assuming that is how it works, we will have to wait in the next few days, I'm assuming we're gonna get, I think we're gonna get more of these, but it could give you the possibility for, for example, healers to do more damage. We have just seen, for example, two affixes and both of these affixes can be used to do DPS, to do damage. So this is something that healers can use 
to increase their damage. There might be something similar where DPSers can use something to increase the healing, although that's never gonna happen, I'm pretty sure. It might also help tanks. Maybe some tanky tanks can take more damaging and more offensive powers, whereas squishier tanks can take more tanky powers. There are going to be some interesting questions, right? If Necrotic is here and Volcanic is here, what's gonna happen with things like Sanguine? What's gonna happen with things like Spiteful? Are you going to spawn friendly mobs rushing to the next enemy in combat to help you or bolstering? Are you gonna be gaining more damage and healing done for every mob you are killing or something along those lines? That's gonna be pretty interesting. I do think it's pretty interesting because as I mentioned, I believe most people are more okay with this high risk, high reward, or at the very least, these trade-off seasonal affixes as opposed to just negative affixes like infested, like reaping, like beguiling. The last couple we have had did offer you some possible power, specifically prideful was of course very big. In this one we have already seen you can get some buffs, so there is also going to be a reward to complete these affixes, to deal with these affixes, so I think that's much better as an affix. What I think can also be very good and must not be understated for your freshness feeling of doing Mythic Plus is that Prideful has been the same affix for the past seven months. It hasn't changed a bit. It only changed based on the type of other affixes like Tyrannical and Fortified, but in and of itself it stayed the same. Whereas if we had something like this with like 10, 15, maybe 20 powers, you can rotate them every week or make them rotate based on the rest of the other affixes this way it's also going to make it different sometimes you're going to have a certain type of maybe damaging powers sometimes you're going to have more defensive powers maybe they're going to change based on the key like powers that will help you with necrotic or powers that will help you with spiteful so it's going to keep the weekly resets of your mythic plus keys more entertaining more interesting you will not be doing the same thing for several months the main difference and the main difficulty for Blizzard in this setting is to make it different and engaging every week enough that people have genuine fun playing but at the same time do not make it so random, so unpredictable and varied that it's going to frustrate players. It's going to make them feel like they are not in control of their character or their power where every week is a complete coin flip on whether or not it's going to be good or bad because that would just make things worse. I do think it requires this amount of attention this next season of Mythic Plus, particularly when you consider that Blizzard is starting somewhat to acknowledge Mythic Plus. They have put the official Blizzard Mythic Plus score into the game in 9.1. I am sure the vast majority of players will still use Raider.io, but what matters is the acknowledgement from Blizzard. Also the acknowledgement that in 9.1 you will be getting teleports, old challenge mode teleports from dungeons when you complete them at plus 20. So there is going to be more incentives for people to push higher rather than stopping at the old, I guess, Keystone Master of plus 15. So I do think there is a pretty good chance at a higher participation in Mythic Plus in this new season overall, over the course of the season. Of course, at the start, it's not going to matter because the start of the expansion is always going to have the biggest numbers. For arenas, for RBGs, for raids, for Mythic Plus, there's always going to be the more numbers at the start. I mean, throughout the tier, throughout the season, three months after the release of Shadowlands, four months or five months compared to three or four months into 9.1. I do think that would be the focus of Blizzard, to keep up player retention for longer in between patches and tiers. So, with this, we are done for the day. After going down this Mythic Plus road for a while, I am, uh, I am interested as I wait the additional data mining and the eventual push into 9.1's PTR of all of these new affixes that Blizzard will be testing. In the meantime, let me guys know what you think of this possible affix for the next season of mythic plus how does it fare in your mind compared to the previous ones now thank you for watching the video if you have enjoyed this you should subscribe if you did not enjoy the video then you are one of the players who enjoyed beguiling and who enjoyed infested so i do not want anything to do with you please leave see you guys soon and in the meantime yes yes it is still raining again great <laughs>